the Chicago Lighthouse Assistive Technology Center presents a demonstration of Zumax's ACE site. Hello, this is Luke Scriven here at the Chicago Lighthouse, and today we are going to look at another headborne wearable device. This one is made by Zumax and it is called ACE Sight. So, without further ado, let's see what it can do. Okay, so this is what the ACE Sight looks like. It comprises of the headset, which we have here. Let's show you the back of that as well. And then we also have the controller, which is here. And there is a wire which goes from the controller to the headset. And just like the other wearable devices, this headset has a camera, which is found in the bridge in the front. And on the inside here, we have two video screens. And so when we're wearing the device, we are looking into the video screens. Wherever our head is pointed, the camera is also pointed. And so we will then see that image on the video screens. And using the controller here, we are able to manipulate the image so that we can see things better. So let's take a look at the control panel and some of the features which are available. And the first thing is the power switch, which is located on the top right hand side. Hold that down. A green light will come on on the front of the control panel to let us know that it's turning on. And on the video screens, I am now seeing an image which says Zumax, so it's starting up. And now I am seeing the room. So it was very quick to, uh, to turn on, which is really great. And the image is uh, nice and sharp. One of the things about this device which really marks it apart from other similar devices is the refresh rate of the screens. And by that I mean that um, when I move my head, there isn't any image lag. So the screens can keep up with movement very well. With some other devices, um, that causes a problem. When you move your head, the image kind of stutters and that can cause you to feel um, a little bit seasick. So with this one, um, they've really done a good job of reducing that, which is great. So with the controls then, the main controls are at the top here, and they're uh, in orange. We have magnification, and these are the thing, this, this is the thing that we're going to be doing most of all. And so, if I want to look at something, I look toward it, and then by pressing my magnification increase button, I am now zooming in, and we can go up to 15 times magnification, so we can go nice and large, and we can zoom back to one times magnification as well, which is really good. So I've zoomed in there, I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out by pressing the magnification decrease button. And we don't hold this, so you might think to yourself, I'll hold it down and it will zoom in. That's not how it works, we just press it and it will, and it will zoom. Now some of the other buttons on the face here, one of the really interesting ones is a circular one, which is located in the middle of the control panel. And uh, if I press this, this is like an outlining mode. And there's three ways you can have this set up. You can have it outlining with normal color, outlining with white on black color, outlining with black on white color. And just to describe what this actually does, imagine a cartoon strip where you have characters and objects and they have a thicker black line around them which kind of makes them pop out from the page. And this is actually what this button does. So whatever we're looking at, um, things will have black lines around them which make them um, kind of pop out, which is really interesting. Now over to the right of that button, we have the other colors. And these would be your more regular color modes that you might be used to um, if you have a CCTV or if you've seen other wearable devices. So there's about six or seven different colors to choose from, yellows and, and greens and blues and so on and so forth. And again, those are designed to help with contrast, uh, specifically while reading. So very useful feature, but um, pretty standard. Over on the right hand side, we have a camera button. If we press this, first of all, we will get a like a target square in the middle of our vision. And the idea of that is we want to put the thing that we want to take a picture of inside the target. So I'm going to go ahead and look at a uh, CCTV we have at the back of the room here. I've put it inside the yellow target box here. I'm going to press the camera button again, and it's now taken a picture. And the great thing about this is once it's taken a picture, it has uh, inertial panning capabilities. So I have the picture in front of me and as I move my head around, it moves around the picture and I can zoom in on the picture and just move my head around to see different aspects of the picture. This is very similar to something which uh, eSight does. So if you're familiar uh, with that function of, of the eSight, then you will, you will know how it works here as well. 
And talking of eSight, one of the things with the eSight device is you are able to walk with it on, and a lot of the other wearable devices you are not able to do that with. Uh, this one, however, you can walk while you're wearing it. And um, the way that it does this is by, it allows you to retain your peripheral vision. And so I can see out to the sides, I can see underneath. Also, with the video screens, I can zoom down to one times magnification. And so everything is normal size rather than being magnified. And in addition, because the refresh rate is very good, um, then uh, uh, it makes it very comfortable when you're moving with this on. And so I can stand up, I can walk around, no problem while wearing this, which means, of course, I can wear it while I'm going outside. And in fact, the visor at the front here is tinted, and that helps me to see the screens in here clearly, even while outside on a sunny day. And so uh, the design is, is really nice in that regard. One of the big benefits to this one, though, compared to the eSight, is that the screens are significantly larger. I would say they're not as large as the Iris Vision, if you're familiar with that device. Um, however, with the Iris Vision, you can't be mobile while wearing it, whereas with this one, you can be. And so if mobility is important, then this has a very good mixture of allowing you to be mobile, but also having large screens so you get a good field of view. Another area in which the Ace site works really well is looking at electronic screens. And so some of the tasks which people often want to do with headborne devices could be things like using a computer or watching television. And this device works really well in both of those scenarios. And that's because, again, of the refresh rate of the screens. And so when I look at the computer screen with the Ace site, everything is nice and sharp and I can magnify it and adjust the colors if I need to and it really does work very well for that purpose. So my overall thoughts on the Ace site are that it's a very good device. It uh, has a lot of great features. I especially like the fact that you can be mobile with it. I like the screen size, and I personally find the design to be very good as well. So there's a lot to like there, I would say. Um, Ace site is currently available at the Chicago Lighthouse, as well as a number of other wearable devices and other technologies such as CCTVs, optical character recognition devices, and so on and so forth. If you're interested in seeing these, you can of course give us a call 312-997-3649 or you can visit us online at lighthousetoolsforliving.com. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope this was helpful, and have a great day!